Mm -hmm. Could you describe a little bit more in detail of what one of those exhibitions would look like and how your technology is presented? Yeah, yes. Yeah, for example, especially for the museums, you know, because of the traditional museum, it just uh, use a, a post or some printing material to tell you a story, to tell you uh, the history or something. But uh, when we apply to multimedia technologies, we can make those uh, we can make, make those uh, material to be vivid. For example, uh, when we introduce something like uh, space, we can use uh, projectors to project on the three three walls or even four walls, four sides of walls, and we just connect all the uh, images together. So when you stand in the center, you can feel like you 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 just in the universe, and mm. the room will be full dark. And so you can see uh, how the star moves, uh, how the planet moves, and so you just like uh, uh, you know uh, sitting in a, a spaceship, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's and, so cool. Uh, also, yeah, that's just one of the technologies because uh, we also have something like. Uh, what we call is an interactive floor or interactive projection system. Uh, that could be a projection screen on the floor. It could be a fish pond. Uh, so when you step into the water, but the water is just an image projected from the projector. So um, And then there will be waves under your feet. And so where you walk, and there could also be some fish uh, just to swim around you. And when you try to step on the fish, the fish will swim away. So those kind of technologies will give you immersive experience. And that can also bring some uh, static traditional display to be uh, interactive, to be immersive. Uh, so uh, we just applied lots of those technologies to museums uh, and also for uh, exhibitions. Because... Many exhibitors, they want their booths to be attractive. So you use uh, big screens and use uh, multiple uh, uh, touch screens. They use uh, some gesture control systems. Also, for recent years, there will also be virtual reality, augmented reality, or even mixed reality. So there are different technologies could be applied. So that, that's our uh, business. Uh, that's still our business. But we just, you know, uh, because most of our clients are, uh, overseas clients. Uh, we actually have a, a much more business outside China. So uh, we have some clients. We noticed that it's about uh, maybe uh, eight or seven years ago that we have some clients from uh, like uh, from some special schools, uh, special education schools, and also from some hospitals like uh, uh, hospital, uh, what do you call it, a case permanent in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And also some uh, centers, uh, some uh, education center from Estonia, from UK, and also uh, from Japan. So, uh, yeah, and at the very beginning, we just uh, noticed that there were some clients, they just, uh, they bought our interactive projection products. They bought our multiple touch uh, program. So we just uh, thought they use those to entertain uh, children. That might be install that into the lobby only, so into the waiting area to calm down children or to give them some entertainment way. But when we do some research, uh, we, when we did some research, we noticed that they actually use the system in their, uh, how to say, in their um, therapy rooms. So they, give, they use those, uh, what do we call, is those, they use those tools to give treatment to train uh, children, with, uh, uh, children with autism. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.